Hey nerdlings, you're watching Captain Algebra. This is Tom and Lacey of Do You Nerd, signing off. Hey everybody, Captain Algebra here. And a few months ago, I brought you part two of the top 10 SNES stage music themes um, with some of my favorite YouTubers. And it got me thinking, you know, Super Nintendo is great, but there's some really good music on the Sega Genesis as well. Now, most people, if you're like me, like the Super Nintendo sound chip better, but the Sega Genesis still had some amazing tracks as well. And so I brought together some of my favorite YouTubers again to talk about 10 great stage themes on the Sega Genesis. So to get us started, Here's Paul, Mega Retro Man, Tessie. Hey, thanks, Cap. Hey, everyone, Mega Retro Man here, and I'm here to share two of my favorite Sega Genesis tunes with you. Now, growing up, I didn't have a Sega Genesis, so a lot of my experience was going to, over to friends' places and playing the Genesis there. So, my experience with the console is pretty limited. However, with that limited amount of time that I've had with the Genesis, I think I've come up with some pretty solid tunes. So here they are, the first one from Streets of Rage, and the second one from Sonic the Hedgehog 2. When I offered to participate in this collaboration, the first tune that came to mind is one of my personal favorites and one of the more popular songs coming out of the Genesis library, and that's the Stage 1 theme from Streets of Rage. Yuzo Koshiro provides some awesome drum and bass to set the tone for the game and other upcoming stages. I know a lot of you who are fans and knowledgeable about Sonic the Hedgehog 2 know that there is no zone with this tune in the game. The mystery of sound test number 10 had players constantly questioning where in this game is this particular tune. If you were like me, you were most likely entranced with this tune and had this playing for minutes on end. Sadly, the zone that was supposed to be the Hidden Palace was scrapped before the final production. The story behind the level 
was that once you collected all seven Chaos Emeralds, you would be transported to the Hidden Palace Zone to eventually reveal Super Sonic. My two choices of Sega Genesis tunes. I hope you enjoyed the Stage 1 theme of Streets of Rage and the Hidden Palace theme from Sonic 2. Now, I'm going to shoot you over to my buddy Nefarious Wes. Brother, take it away. Thanks a lot, Paul. Now, if you're familiar with my channel, then it probably comes as no surprise that I am a huge fan of music. I love music even more than video games. And music in a video game is very important. And it oftentimes either makes or breaks the game for me. And if you're familiar with my channel, then you also know that Musha is one of my all-time favorite games. And a huge reason for that is for the soundtrack. The soundtrack plays a big role in my love for this game. And there's one stage that probably stands out the most out of all of them. So let's take a look. As soon as you press start on Musha, this excellent shooting onslaught doesn't pull any punches as the first stage's background music slams you in the face with its blistering fast tempo and patented Sega Genesis electric guitar tones. It's so friggin' METAL! Full Metal Fighter is an appropriate name for this track and perfectly accentuates the intense action of the game itself, complemented by copious fleets of mechanical baddies and all kinds of shit blowing up. Man does it get me in the mood to crash! And what else could you ask for when beginning a shooter? Easily my favorite soundtrack on the Genesis, and one of my all-time favorites, period, the music speaks for itself. Take a listen. So I discovered Atomic Runner on the Sega Genesis about four years ago and I instantly fell in love with the game. It is phenomenal. And again, just like Musha, one of the big reasons that is, is because of its awesome soundtrack. And there's one particular stage in this game that really melts my butter. Let's see what it is. Good God is the music in Atomic Runner freaking sweet, especially Stage 3. With the motif combining ruins of a long gone ancient civilization with futuristic machines and technology, Atomic Runner commands tunes to mirror its environment. The third stage pulls this off in splendid fashion. As unique as the game is itself, the soundtrack is as equally idiosyncratic, offering brilliant hooks, melodies, and even chants, all held together with infectious percussion. 
Danny East utilized the Genesis sound chip magnificently here. It's pretty damn impressive. If Musha is my all-time favorite soundtrack on Sega's heralded 16-bit machine, Atomic Runner is a close second. I'm not kidding here. This platforming shooter hybrid's music is nothing short of fantastic, and the game is pretty awesome too. So there you go, those are two of my all-time favorite stage songs for the Sega Genesis. Now you know the next two are going to be bangers because they come from a connoisseur of video game music, my boy Mike Tendo. Take it away, man. Thanks to Nefarious West for handing off the video to me. This is Mike from Dongled, also known as Mike Tendo to some of you. Thank you to Captain Algebra for hosting this Genesis Music event. I'm a big fan of the Genesis sound chip, the YM2612, and I wanted to showcase two tracks that mean, uh, you know, quite a bit to me. These are two tracks that, when I think of Genesis Music, I think of these as primary examples. And the first one is from a little game that we never got here in the States called Battle Mania Daiginjo, which is actually Troubleshooter 2. Battle Mania de Ginjo is the sequel to Vic Takai's Sega Genesis game, Troubleshooter. It's my belief that if this game was released outside of Japan, it would have been one of those legendary games that nobody can find for a decent price in the wild. Sadly, because of this, less people know about its awesome gameplay. But honestly, for me, it's all about the music with this title. Today, we're going to dive into the first level's music, a track called Twilight Express. From the scooped drum fill in the beginning to the overdriven chug of guitar, this heavy metal trailblazer is the perfect tune to headbang to as your character floats up the city skyline blasting away bad guys. There's some really impressive parallax scrolling going on throughout the level in the background. This tune begins to fade when you reach the boss, which your partner destroys with what? A convertible out of the window? This game is awesome! You play as one of two girls, initially Madison, and you are later joined by the partner in the convertible, Crystal. But this first level is a high-flying, hair-raising experience thanks to the killer riffs and drums of Twilight Express. Next up, I want to showcase a different track from a game called Gunstar Heroes. This is the Stage 1 theme. Next up is a classic game with a stellar soundtrack, Treasure's release called Gunstar Heroes. Another 1993 game, yet technically not the first level, the song is called Military on the Max Power. Gunstar Heroes lets the player choose which stage they want to take on, very similar to the Mega Man series. Since this one was the first on the left, many including myself consider it the first stage. I'd also like to say that it's probably the easiest stage to play through in my opinion. From the first synth growl, to the stomping bass lines slamming through the hopeful sounding lead melodies, we get a track that evens out while you play through the stage. That bass line is the star of the song, while the lead harmonies take turns ascending and descending on the keys. There is a mid-boss attack that interrupts the experience, but up until that point, players will take on the role of one of the Gunstar heroes, red or blue, depending on if they chose single player or two player. Some of the weapons you use in the game can be kinda cheap, like this combination of the homing shot and laser, but otherwise Gunstar Heroes is a game with music that will keep your blood pumping throughout the entire experience. Thanks again to Captain Algebra for hosting this wonderful little video, and I wanted to go ahead and toss it over to Chris Pico, 
we'll be showcasing some more Genesis goodness. Thanks, Mike Tendo. So when it comes to music on the Sega Genesis, it was kind of a tough choice because I'm honestly not that big of a fan of the sound chip. That's not to say that some composers haven't found their way around the limitations of the Genesis to come up with some amazing compositions for some of their games. So here are my two favorite tracks from some Sega Genesis games. Number one is the first stage music from Alien 3. So as a huge fan of the Alien series of films, I was really curious to see what the Alien 3 game was going to be like and if it was actually going to be able to capture that mood of dread and constant threat of attack. The first thing I noticed when I played the game for the first time was this music is setting up the exact mood you want for a game based in this film franchise. Not only does it sound extremely dark and foreboding, but it also gets you amped up to go and kill some aliens. I actually had a recording of this music on an audio tape that I used to listen to all the time back in the day. All the music in the game is pretty amazing, but I'd say that the standout track is the first stage. And for my second choice is a piece of music from a game that actually sounds like it's coming from something more like the Super Nintendo. It doesn't sound like it comes from that Genesis sound chip at all. The game is Gauntlet 4 and the piece of music is known as Transparent Obstacle. So you want an awesome piece of music that can creep you out as well as get you in the mood to go and whoop some butt? That's what this track from Gauntlet 4 is all about. starts off sounding really moody and dark and it turns into something that's kind of action oriented and makes you want to soldier on. I remember the first time I played this game was on a Sega Nomad with a pair of earphones while I was working the night shift at a limousine service. And most of the music in the game does sound like it's from a Genesis game, but then this track started and I'm like, did something happen? Is my Nomad broken? What's going on here? This does not sound like it's from the same game, but man, the more the track played on, the bigger the grin on my face got, and I was like, now this is some music. It took me completely by surprise. So those are my two favorite tracks from some of the Sega Genesis games in my collection. So now I'm going to hand it back off to Captain Algebra. Thanks Pico. Wow, some great choices already. Uh, so for my two, the first one should come as no surprise. It's my favorite Sega Genesis game of all time and the soundtrack is amazing and it's from Streets of Rage 2. <laughs> Streets of Rage 2 soundtrack may be my favorite soundtrack of all time, so it was hard to pick just one. In the end, I had to go with Alien Power because of the atmosphere it creates with the level. After walking through an amusement park, you enter a strange head into what looks like an alien world. There's fog and mysterious plants everywhere as enemies pop up from the bottom of the screen to take you out. The strange mix of acid rock and techno creates an ominous atmosphere where you don't know what will come out next. The snare drum makes an appearance every once in a while and really brings it all together. Yuzo Koshiro does amazing work and is probably one of my favorite composers for video game music. He's worked on the Streets of Rage series, Act Razor, Super Adventure Island, Beyond Oasis, and the Shenmue series, just to name a few. When his name is associated with the soundtrack, you know it's going to be good.
And the next one also is a classic Sega Genesis game, Golden Axe 2. I've always loved Dragon's Throat Cave's visuals, as you're traveling through a volcano and red rock surrounds you with rivers of molten lava flowing behind you as you take on hordes of skeletons and lizard men. The theme starts with a bass drum that sets the tone and is followed by heroic horns to remind you of the important mission at hand. That bass drum always made me feel like I was actually the one marching my way to Dark Gold to take back the Golden Axe. So there you go, there are our choices for 10 of the best stage themes on the Sega Genesis. Now obviously, you might not agree with them, so let us know in the comments below what are some of your favorites. What did you think of our choices? Um, there was a great response to when I put this out on Twitter asking for people to be a part of it. So there's definitely going to be a part two, maybe even a part three coming down the line. Uh, so I will be contacting all of you people that wanted to be involved. Uh, so thanks for watching, I appreciate uh, Mike Tendo, Paul Tessie, Nefarious West, and Chris Pico for being part of this. Uh, they did an awesome job. I love their choices. So thank you very much, guys. I really, really appreciate it. And until next time, this is Captain Algebra, signing off.